Uh, Taki Ito? Yeah, I've heard of the guy. Word is, he did something monumentally stupid, then ran off before they could catch him. And to be completely honest, I was a little surprised when I first heard it. Okay, well, I mean, not that surprised. Wait, you mean he already had a bad reputation? No, not exactly. <coughs> He's just very overbearing in everything he does. Big and brash and always making a ruckus. So, on the one hand, he's a larger-than-life kind of guy. But on the other hand, he's emotionally volatile. When he's in a good mood, he's as high as a kite. But when he gets upset, he gets completely enraged. I don't personally see him as a bad guy. But I guess I wouldn't put it past him to get all riled up and lose control. Hmm, you know, I'm afraid that I'm not too sure myself. <coughs> I keep a pretty good eye on what's happening in the city, and as far as I can tell, he just idles the days away. When someone asks for it, he's willing to lend a helping hand, but other than that, he's just out making a scene with the kids on the street or his gang. <sighs> if I had to guess, his lack of income finally drove him to do something more drastic to make ends meet. Is it just Paimon, or is this Ito fellow starting to sound pretty weird? I'm afraid that I don't have much else to tell you. He tends to spend his time with people a little more lively than myself. Perhaps you could try asking around some more. Okay, thanks! Come and try some creative cooking. Taki Ito? Hmm, oh yeah. I heard about that whole thing. I'm sure it must have been a mix-up on the Tenryo Commission's end. He could never do anything so dastardly. Huh? How can you be so sure? Is he really as trustworthy as all that? <laughs> no, perhaps you misunderstand me. When I said he could never do anything dastardly, I meant... He literally doesn't have what it takes. Mm, maybe a story will explain it better. So, he used to spend a lot of time playing rock, paper, scissors and hide and seek with the kids on the streets. Kids, being kids, aren't exactly the most difficult to outsmart. I'm sure you can see what I'm getting at here. He used to lose all the time, sometimes catastrophically. <laughs> though, right? No, not at all. The one time I saw him win, he started jumping around and yelling, I won! I finally won! I'm unbeatable! And so on. Then he took the kid's candy as his prize and ate it right there in front of him. Ugh, that's just plain wrong. He did take it way too far that time. The poor kid started crying, so I stepped in and gave Ito a scolding. He was pretty quick to admit that he was fully in the wrong, and it wasn't long before the kid had stopped crying and was laughing and playing again as if nothing had ever happened. In fact, the children quite like playing with him because he's always serious about the stakes and never throws a game on purpose. So, I suppose what I'm trying to say is, is a guy who can't even beat kids at a children's game really going to be capable of these kinds of diabolical deeds? Huh, he doesn't sound like a bad guy at all. In fact, he kind of sounds like a man of integrity. Yes, my thoughts exactly. Still, the Tenryo Commission's evidence against him is supposed to be irrefutable. So, I'm not trying to condone his actions or anything. If he really has messed up big time, then he should face the consequences just like anyone else. Thanks for the info! We'll keep asking around! Arataki Ito. <laughs> of course I know him. We've been trying to apprehend him recently. 
We know he's already left Inazuma City, but with no clues to follow, we have no choice but to commission others for help, including the Adventurer's Guild. Captain says that Arataki Ito hasn't done anything seriously bad before, so it seems pretty strange. Paimon's curious. Is there any evidence of all this stuff he's accused of? Yes, of course. Otherwise, we'd never have put so many people on the case. For starters, most thieves will try to devise a way to conceal their identity, but for an Oni, the horns are a dead giveaway. I mean, the whole city could have recognized it was him. At first, he was just one of our suspects, but when we went to investigate, he personally confessed to everything and started trying to provoke the officers. What's most frustrating is that he then managed to escape along with his entire gang. He must have been planning the whole thing right from the start. Of course he did. Whether material or psychological, there is plenty of evidence either way. He's never had a mora to his name his entire life, and he's never kept down a real job. Word is that he also takes care of someone in his gang, and that the burden of it takes quite the toll on him. After scrounging for a living all these years, maybe he thought that being the bad guy would be an easier ride. As for his psychological motives, it's a bit embarrassing to talk about, but we <clears throat> confiscated his vision during the Vision Hunt Decree. At the time, Arataki Ito put up quite a fight. It took a huge amount of manpower and resources, and in the end, we had to enlist the help of Kujo Sara to finally secure his vision. The vision hunt was a mistake, but we never expected that he would go to such extreme lengths to take revenge on us. He does sound a little unstable, just like people have been saying. If the two of you are able to capture Arataki Ito, please bring him straight here. We'll handle him from there. Thanks for all the info. Hmm. Too bad we still don't know where he could have run off to. We already got word on the street, so maybe it's time to talk to a real specialist. Haima remembers that there's a detective agency here in Inazuma. Maybe we can try asking there! Hello! We'd like to ask some questions about Arataki Ito. Oh, him again. Sure, I have answers. We've already done some investigating for the Tenryo Commission. But first... Do you have enough Moro to cover the fee? I've heard all about your travels. After everything you've been through, I'm sure you understand the way these sorts of things work. Uh, how much Moro are we talking about here? A one-off payment of 397,000 Moro, up front. Plus a further 5% of your Adventures Guild remuneration as my commission, if Arataki Ito is successfully caught and brought to justice. Whoa! That's crazy expensive! How did you even come up with the price that high? <laughs> Hold on. I wasn't finished. It just so happens the initial fee has already been paid in full by the Tenryo Commission. All you'll need to pay is the small commission fee. And, as for that amount, I'll settle things with the Adventures Guild once we have Ito. So, from the way I see it, you guys are getting a pretty nice deal. Now then, to give you the full picture in this case, we must first recount a well-known Inazuman fairy tale. A long, long time ago, in a village lost to time, there lived a crimson oni and a blue oni. They were the best of friends. The crimson oni looked fierce, but was gentle like the humans. The blue oni looked human, but was reclusive, like an oni. The Crimson Oni wished to befriend the humans, but they were scared and threw beans at him whenever he came near. So the Blue Oni said to the Crimson Oni, Akka, I'll cause trouble in the village. You'll come and stop me. Then the humans will accept you. 
As planned, the Crimson Oni chased the Blue Oni away. The Crimson Oni's deeds spread throughout the land, and people finally accepted him. But when the Crimson Oni went to tell the Blue Oni the good news, he was gone and left only a letter behind. I went traveling. Don't come find me or they'll treat you as a naughty little Oni. But don't worry about me. No matter where I go, we'll always be friends. I suppose the blue oni simply disappeared, never to be seen again. Only the crimson oni remain now. Mm. But, but the blue oni was just an innocent little kid! Of course it does. Otherwise, I wouldn't go through all the trouble of telling it. One interpretation is that the story is actually broadly based on historical events and that Arataki Ito is, in fact, a descendant of the Crimson Oni. What I'm trying to tell you is that the Oni have sacrificed a lot in the past in order to finally integrate themselves into human society. But there are still some volatile personality traits in the Oni bloodline. Every generation of Oni inherits these traits, so while Arataki Ito has never been known to commit a wrongful act in the past, can we ever completely rule out the possibility of him one day allowing this side of him to take over? But how could he do that? After the Blue Oni's sacrifice? That would be such a betrayal! That's a very old story. Nobody knows how long it's been since the Blue Oni disappeared. We can only assume that they have long since died out, in which case, it would be quite a stretch to say it still counts as a betrayal at this point. Besides, the suspect has already confessed. What is there left to discuss? According to my investigation, he was headed southwest. I would bet he's already made it to Yashiori Island by now. The Tenryo Commission is unable to enter territory controlled by Songonomia troops. No doubt that's the reason Arataki Ito chose to flee in that direction. Don't mention it. I'm just doing my duty. Wait! Paimon still has a question. If Arataki Ito has given in to his bad side, won't that mean he's extra mean and violent now? I could only assume so. Judging from his previous bouts, he is a skilled fighter with a lot of brute strength. Whether or not you'll be able to handle him, that I do not know. Ah, yes. Now that you mention it, I seem to recall that Arataki Ito is allergic to beans. In fact, all Oni will avoid beans, but especially Ito. I heard that just touching a bean is enough to incapacitate him. If you could weaken him a bit by triggering his allergies, perhaps you'd have better luck subduing him. It just so happens that I have a bag of beans right here. I was planning to use them to make some porridge, but I think you will find a better use for them. Of course, I will charge the Adventurer's Guild a fair and reasonable rate for the beans. Sneaky! But also, thanks! Let's head to 